to us, magic sounds like this extraordinary thing. Pulling a rabbit out of the hat, coming out of nowhere. But it's here, it's real. And the more that we are open to the unseen, to the energies of this world, to abundance and manifesting, to calling in and growing, the more we'll be able to call magic into our lives. Join me as I share stories, wisdom, and curiosity around connecting with your higher frequency, tapping into the synchronicities of the universe, and opening up to the unseen possibilities that this world has to offer. I am your host, Dana Fay, and this is the Ordinary Magic Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to Ordinary Magic. I am joined today by Annika Moreda. Annika is a homeschooling mom to four kids, which she's had in four years. She is professionally trained and certified intuitive coach and healer. Annika teaches mothers how to reclaim their magic and boldly embody their truths through one-of-a-kind intuitive mentorship. Thanks for joining us, Annika. Thank you so much for having me, Dana. Okay, so I have to ask, four kids in four years, how long ago was this? <laughs> and is that when your intuitive abilities started to come online? Good questions. So I am... I would call myself a natural born intuitive. I always experience things like seeing orbs or ghosts. I had premonitions. So if my husband was going to drive in the driveway in five minutes, I would know and I would get an intuitive hit like, oh, he's going to be home in five minutes. But having four kids in four years was a game changer for my soul. And that was my twins came first and I had them almost seven years ago now. So you, okay. So you had this connection to your intuition prior to your kids, but like you said, that was a game changer Mm -hmm. to have four kids in four years was, did that feel more because of what was happening with your body, that your body had to keep being in tune with these new souls that were coming in, you know, it's expanding, it's birthing, you're taking care of the kids, or would you say it had more to do with mothering or maybe a mix of both? It's a good question. I think it was a bit of a mix of both. My journey into motherhood was not easy. We experienced infertility, we did IVF, and then we got pregnant with our twins. We had one twin who was not promised to make it. And so it made it a bit of a traumatic pregnancy. It was very hands-on at the doctors twice a week until she was born. And even then we weren't promised that she was going to live. And so at that moment, I think that I turned to my angels and to prayer to help get me through and to help support me through that really difficult time. When you become a mother for the first time, you really don't know what to expect or what it's going to be like. And to become a mother in that way where there's so much trauma, there's a lot of unknown. And when you feel like there's so much unknown, you also feel very alone and kind of lost and also very, very scared. So I found a lot of comfort in connecting to my angels and my guides and found a lot of hope and faith and prayer at that time. Wow. I'm so sorry to hear that that's how your very first experience went, because I feel like for every woman, the first experience should just be naivete. You know, Mm. it should just be like excitement and, oh my goodness, this is new for me. This is a portal. This is a rite of passage for a woman. So for yours to be more steeped in the medical world and to kind of take that away from you, I imagine that was really hard. What would you say to other women who are going through anything similar to that? I think the best thing I can do is reflect on my own experience and look at it now as the one of great wisdom, one that I can pull a lot of compassion from, and that I can hold a tremendous amount of space for other women who are experiencing the same thing. I would say reach out to communities who have experienced similar things that you are experiencing through now so that you have people to lean on, people to ask questions and know that you're not alone. Yeah. I, yeah. When something happens like that, yes, it does seem like people, you do end up connecting with new people. Like it, it changes your life. Yeah. And so then that took you on the journey of being a mom and probably being super busy mm-hmm. with raising four <laughs> young little kiddos, you know, diapers, nap times, going to, you know, bed schedule, like all those things. And then which led you into this path and this career into helping 
other mothers connect to their intuition. What does that look like for you? What have you been doing these past couple of years <laughs> as you've been working with your mom clients? That's such a good question. <laughs> so it's when I rebirth myself those two times, but with three children, it feels like a rebirth three times. And that was in a short span. It was only within 14 months of each other. I found myself going, who am I? I didn't even know what brought me fulfillment anymore, what made me happy. And and really the foundation of who I was was completely decimated. I was rocked to the core. And I felt like I had this opportunity to rebuild myself. But the way that this kind of almost like this feeling of being lost showed up was, and also what I know now was also misalignment with my soul. And how that came together for me is it showed up in eczema. So it was very physical. And I realized when I started getting symptoms just two days after having my third baby in 14 months, I had to make a huge life change. And I either had to dedicate to healing or my life was not going to turn out the way that I had hoped it would. And so I completely overhauled my diet. I went plant-based. I started living just to heal. And it took me through a rigorous year of healing. But after that, I started connecting even more deeply with my intuition. And I started experiencing new things. And I was wondering, I have to be able to find somebody who can teach me how to utilize this for good and not to be so fearful of it because seeing ghosts can be a little scary. But when you have somebody who can teach you how to help those ghosts move on, that's really powerful and very empowering. So I found a mentor and she taught me how to use these gifts, how to be a healer, how to really step into this next version, this next iteration of who I am as a mother and how to do this in a really powerful way. And one where I was stepping out of martyrhood and victimhood because I felt like, why me? Everything felt like it was happening to me. And as soon as I stepped out of that, it felt like it was a redirection. I was able to see things in a new light and I realized it's not happening to me, but all of these things are just a lesson. And if I choose to learn from them, I can use all of this wisdom for the greater good of mothers. And I knew that all of these experiences that I've had, my fourth baby was a beautiful oh. healing home birth. And I had my, my woman tribe all around me. So it was so different and healing in its own right. So I know that I can speak to a lot of different iterations of motherhood and how people have experienced it. And I think for me, I now realize that's my greatest power. And that I can speak to a lot of different mothers and different stages of motherhood. And so I realized after working with a coach that this was what my soul was here to do. Wow. You went through an incredible metamorphosis. Oh. Did. I love this because, okay, my podcast, this is called Ordinary Magic. And I'm what I'm trying to do is to make <laughs> these seemingly magical things. I mean, you just literally talked about seeing ghosts, you know, make that ordinary, like that this should be ordinary that many people mm -hmm. have this ability, but oftentimes we're very scared. I, I too myself right now am scared. I had one situation once where I fell asleep on the couch and I literally heard this man voice, like wake me up. And it was for sure a ghost. Like I jumped and ran to the bedroom. It was not something that I was interested in being open to. And so as you got yeah. that mentor and as you're actually like actively pursuing these abilities, these senses that are not part of the five senses, how did that show up for you personally, but also for your loved ones and people who are already in your life? That's a really good question because I think for me, what I call it was kind of my awakening. I stepped into my light and I started understanding fully what everything meant around me. And I love how you spoke to the five senses because I always now refer to this as another sense. It's like a sense of smell or taste for me. The way that I speak to my guides, I use them all day long. I speak to them all day long. They will tell me, for example, while I'm driving, be careful, there's somebody to your right crossing the street and I'll slow down, I'll stop my car. And it just makes me a lot more aware of my surroundings, of myself. So the way that this affected me, my loved ones, uh, my friends, my family, it it was um, another journey in itself. I, I can't say that it was easy. I can 
speak very much to how it probably felt going through the witch trials. My husband's family does not agree with my lifestyle or my abilities, and they think that that they're not real. And that was a journey too, because we live on a shared family property next to them. And so I've had to do this blossoming, this awakening under the veil of the projected ideas that I'm in the wrong or that I'm not doing something right. And of course, that's everyone's greatest fear when they're starting to step into their gifts and when they're feeling like, what is this? This isn't normal. You don't want to be attacked for not feeling normal. And I think that's part of where my compassion and my greatest passion lies for helping mothers get through this is that it isn't abnormal for you to experience life this way. It's just a different way of experiencing life. And we're going to see it becoming more and more common as we move further into the future. Our children are coming into this world with more gifts. And the more that we can step into our gifts and understand them, the greater ability we'll have to be able to support our children and help them thrive in this world. Yes, I love that. Full body chills down my spine. (laughs) I feel not alone in your presence right now, Annika. And that is the point Mm. of these podcasts. That's the point of technology for us to know, like, especially as we're going through this great change in this world, that it's only going to get more normal. If you are going through a spiritual awakening right now, if you have this other sense coming online, whatever it is, if you're able to connect with your guides, you're seeing orbs, you know, all the things, Mm -hmm. you're not alone. And it's okay to want to dive in and discover more about it. Yeah, it's it's more than okay. Like I encourage everyone to do that because on the other side of this curiosity lays even more magic for you and deeper soul connections to your loved ones, to your children. And as a mother, I think that we innately want to just be deeply connected to our children. And by following this curiosity, you can find those deep soul connections with your children. Can you give me some examples of that? How do you use these intuitive abilities to connect with your children? And is it different per child? That's a really great question. And I think that I can answer this in a million ways because to me, like I've said, this is just normal everyday life now. And so I'll give you one of the examples that comes to me immediately is I do a lot of energy healings on my children. And so I'll be laying in bed at night and while they're asleep, I will visualize them and I will start doing things like cutting cords, cutting cords from family members, from friends, from myself, from my husband, so that they can be their own energy bodies free of anything that might be draining them or influencing them in a way that isn't allowing them to show up and be their most pure, authentic version of themselves. I'll speak to their higher selves. So if I'm having a hard time with them or if we're in a hard moment, I'll make sure I pause and I'll pull in their higher selves and start speaking to them and asking them, what do you need from me? What can I do in this moment to make things easier? Or if I'm experiencing hardship in ways being a homeschooler, I teaching the kids is a whole nother level of learning them. And it's very intimate. So I ask often, how can I best serve them? How can I be the best teacher for them? And what do they need right now in their lives to help them thrive the most? That's amazing. I think that's so cool. There's so many parenting books out there and programs and, and things that have worked for other moms. But what you're saying is, Mamas out there, you guys can connect to your intuition and connect with Mm -hmm. your kids, connect with their higher selves Mm -hmm. and work with their energy and do that on a deeper level while also following the science and the recommendations and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a really great segue into how I had to learn how to advocate for my daughter because after she was born, she also had some medical complications and I learned how to be her voice. And how could I be her voice if I couldn't connect to her soul, if I didn't understand who she was on this deep level? And so I think that even before I found my mentor, I learned how to connect with her through energy. And she was a really great communicator if I just had the ability to listen. And I think that this is true for all mothers and all children. Our infants are here 
to help serve and support us. And while it feels really hard and draining and it feels like we are showing up for them, know that they're also here to do really big work for you too. And I truly deeply believe that each of my children have taught me a lesson and that they bring so much goodness to my lives and so much value. And I cherish that deeply now. And I understand it so deeply too. I love that. And I, I totally resonate with before our children are here that they, they choose us, they choose us for their soul's Mm -hmm. evolution and also for our soul's evolution. And perhaps we've been in past lifetimes together and maybe I was the child and they were the mom, you know, who knows? And it's just so cool for them to come in and kind of rock our world and teach us life lessons. Mm Mm-hmm. They have a really magical way of doing that. And it can feel so um, devastating at first and, and like we lose ourselves. But what's really happening is this magical up leveling of our souls and it's a realignment. So when you feel like things are starting to crumble around you, I've learned that that crumbling is actually just a realignment. So you're stepping out of this old version of yourself and you're entering into a higher version of yourself and your life's path and you're really stepping into your mission. So I guess to any mama who's going through the crumbling right now, I have a tremendous amount of compassion, but I also want you to feel excitement too, because know that this is exactly where you're meant to be. And when you feel things crumbling, it's because you're doing the really true deep soul work that was meant to happen for you. Yes. And when this mama is in between kind of the two worlds, right? Like she's doing, she's Mm -hmm. getting into her realignment, but yet she's in this old identity, stepping into her new identity. When you work with clients, how do you, how do you calm people's minds from future tripping or trying to make sense of things. How do you help people see that they can trust in the universe and and divine timing and that their soul's lessons are unique to them? What do you recommend to moms who are deep in the middle of it right now? That's such a, a great question too. Thinking back to my own experience and then also clients that I have worked with, when we're in that in between. What I know is there's a lot of fear that's holding us back. And when I'm able to work directly with clients, I'm able to identify what blocks are holding you back. What does that fear look like? And where is it coming from? Because there are so many levels of fear. There are so many levels of things that can hold us back. And I work deeply with ancestors and breaking cycles and helping you find answers or those aha moments of, oh, that's why this feels so hard right now. Or that's why I have showed up as this version of myself for so long. And so there's a deeper understanding that comes from working with me and finding someone who can see you for who you are beyond just this human form. Because all of us experience those blocks. We are all ever healing and changing and growing and evolving. Just because I'm here and I have gifts doesn't mean that I don't experience hardship probably every day because I do. And I'm still growing and learning. And so when you're in between, what my guys are showing me is that there's one step over the threshold and one step behind. And when you're in a doorway, that door is going to close. So which side are you going to choose when the door closes? If you're more comfortable with having your foot inside, that's okay, pull the other one back in. But sometimes when you start to step into your gifts, it's hard to forget what you've seen or what you've learned. So I I encourage women who are in that in-between phase to bring their step forward, bring both feet out that door, close the door behind you. It's okay to let go of life as you knew it, because I promise it gets much better from here. As long as you continue to pour yourself into your growth, love yourself deeply and trust yourself. I am quickly interrupting this episode to tell you about my human design offerings. Are you wanting to learn more about what your human design is all about? I am able to help you apply it to your life and start living your design today. I offer a human design audio guide, which is a great entry level into your human design. We go over the most important layers, which are your energy type, strategy, authority, your biggest gift in this world, your profile, and your life theme. 
I also offer a full 90 minute human design reading over Zoom, and that includes a very robust document that you get to take home as well. The full reading are for people who know they want to dive deep right away or people who have already started their human design journey and want to start applying it to their life. You can find your human design audio guide or the full human design reading on my website at DanaFay.com. That's D-A-Y-N-A-F-A-Y-E.com. I hope to connect with you soon. I resonate with that so much. I saw this post the other day that talked about five things of your spiritual awakening that maybe people don't know. And one of them was there's a honeymoon phase. And I felt that so Mm -hmm. deeply. Like the first two years was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm soaking up all these things. I'm (laughs) touching base with my guides. I'm channeling. I'm, you know, all this stuff. And then there's this uncomfortable phase of like, now I know what I know. Now I have felt what I felt. And I can't go back. I can't go back to my old identity. And sometimes it would feel easier if I could just go back to my old identity. Like, I, this is really hard. The honeymoon phase is over. I am uncomfortable. And I, again, like this feeling and knowing, I agree with you, it's never going to end. Once you're on this journey, you just keep, you get to the next and then you up level and you up level or you heal, you heal, you, your gifts change, they grow. We're in it. We chose this path. Very much so. And I think that what you're saying too, when you find yourself in that moment, it can feel very lonely or almost kind of like stagnant because you don't know which direction to turn because there's almost some fear that's holding you back from elevating even more. Because if you've reached this level, how much more uncomfortable are you going to be if you reach the next level? But the thing that can help you is finding community reaching out to magical women who are doing the same thing as you, who are feeling the same way, because we all need the confirmation. We all need the permission. We all need to know that we're not doing this alone and we are so much stronger together. Yes. I love that. And there's so many ways to find community, especially in the spiritual industry, Find something that you're interested in, whether that's an intuition workshop or channeling or human design or astrology or whatever that is. That's how I found some community. I took a human design training. That's what I was super interested in. And I chose specifically one that I knew was tight knit. It was only like 12 women. I had said to my guides, what is my purpose of this? And one of the biggest purposes was, is just to find some friends (laughs) that are, Mm. that have, are going through similar things as me. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I love that. I totally agree with that. I think sometimes it's even more valuable when you enter the room with people that you don't know and let it just kind of happen and come together. So those are part of the the intuition that you should follow and listen to because sometimes when it doesn't make sense at all, that's when it's all going to come together the most for you. Yes. So for the listeners right now, let's say they're bought in. They're like, let me tap into my intuition. For someone who's just starting out to listen to their intuition, what do you recommend? What is best practices? I know that you said you went through a bit of a health journey too. How important is it to feel healthy in your body in order to tap into your intuition? Or is it simply a muscle that you build over time or a chicken and an egg thing where like both come together? Hmm. I think that this goes for many spiritual teachers as well. There is a rock bottom point where you start to look at yourself and you go, this is it. This is all there is. This can't be it. There has to be more. I know that I have more in me. And whether you start to hear an angel speaking to you or your guides pick you up or just magically something happens to you, an opportunity lands in your lap know that your team is watching over you in those moments. And when we choose to continue on and we take that hand of opportunity, that's when we see our intuition start to grow and we start to gain a deeper connection. I do believe that having a healthy, clear vessel has a lot to do with the clarity of connection that you experience and with the expansion that you allow your soul to receive especially from human to your higher self, which is the highest version of your soul. When I was able to clear my vessel and 
kind of get rid of inflammation and toxins, things that keep my brain from being able to connect in a different manner. I then was able to receive different frequencies of energy and read them, understand them, listen to them. So when you can take away all of the fuzziness, and that doesn't just show up in foods and the way that you're eating, but also through lifestyle, living a little more peacefully or prioritizing your wellness, taking time to meditate for yourself, consuming books that help you grow and expand. Because when you're reading the words or even listening to, because I'm a big proponent of Audible because I'm a mom and I don't have a lot of time to sit and read. So I've done a lot of my expanding through Audible. But when you are opening these books and the words are pouring into you, there's a certain amount of frequency that these books have been written in. And so you're receiving that magic that way too. So I think it's about bringing little pieces of magic into your life as much as you can in a sustainable way. Yes. So it fits your life. Don't put pressure on it. Pick Mm -hmm. your favorite thing. If it is listening Mm -hmm. to an audible book or if it's picking up a physical one or listening to a certain accredited teacher's speech, sometimes they're carrying the frequency of that energy. Absolutely. So you had mentioned that you really help moms look into their blocks and maybe sometimes it's of an ancestral theme. Can you explain more about what that looks like? Absolutely. So everyone's gifts look different when you're an intuitive. My gift particularly is identifying people's blocks. It's been this way my entire life. I have been told you should be a motivational speaker. I've been told you should do this as your job. I am the go-to person when people feel like they're having issues or a problem. And I love doing it. It's just something that comes very naturally and easily. And this is because I can read their energy I can receive messages from their divine team. I can see things in them physically that are holding them back in their chakras. They experience trauma where they're holding it. I see entities or beings that are holding on to them. I see cords that might be connected to things that might even go as far back as ancestral lineage. So what the ancestral lineage looks like to me is I will hear the words that someone is sharing with me. And through those words, I it's almost like a, a weaving of sorts. And then they become t- unwoven in front of me. And I can follow this direct line to where this block is coming from. So as someone is speaking to me, I'm reading their energy because there's something really beautiful about speaking and speaking your truth you start to lay it out there all on the table. And it's like an invitation for me to jump in and see what's going on. And so like a practitioner, I'll see, I'll identify. Sometimes loved ones will step forward. I'll hear messages about where this came from. I will see things happening in real time as to when this block or this cycle started. And I can give you an example. So if you have something like self-worth issues, or if you are having issues around money and you start to tell me about this, how this has shown up in your life, what it looks like in your career, if you feel really held back and stuck, stagnant, like nothing is ever going to be available to you. To me, that might sound like there's a further issue than what your physical being is carrying right now. So I'll look back into your lineage and I might find an ancestor who lived a life that was really, really wealthy and healthy. And then what happened is all of that wealth was taken away by falling ill, someone dying, something really tragic happening in that lifetime. And then their lineage, their daughter or son carried the experience forward and then passed it down and down and down. And it still remains with you. And what I can do is cut that cord from that lifetime so that you no longer share that plug of energy in this lifetime. And you would experience immense shifts afterwards. And it's hard for me to put into words what it feels like when you remove a cord, but it feels lighter brighter, you'll see more opportunities show up at your doorstep. And for no apparent reason, your frequency will shift. You'll start to vibrate at a higher frequency because it's almost like an anchor holding you back. 
That is so cool. <laughs> I had heard something once along the lines of like, you carry in your DNA, I believe, is it nine generations or something like that of any of the trauma or things that people have been through? I've I've seen even further. Yeah. I mean, I've seen thousands of years back. Dang. And it's different for each soul because not every soul spends their lifetimes on earth and they might touch in the cosmic realms, in their galactic family, and then they'd come back and feel called to come back to earth. So it's not like everyone stays on earth once they've come here. They can still move on or go somewhere else in between lifetimes. So I don't necessarily know if it's nine generations back, but it's definitely one soul that was connected to your soul and you have the ability to disconnect it. And it's interesting too, because I will see lifetimes, past lives in the cosmic realms and be able to remove blocks from those lifetimes as well and help you walk through this lifetime, help you remember it, help you sense it. And it it brings back this enormous amount of oh, that's right. And it's kind of like a feeling of home. And that's where I once was, where I where I belong. And when we can talk that out, it's a beautiful healing way to let go of these things too. Wow. Yeah. I had an Akashic record reading, I think like a month or so ago now. Hmm. And when I sat with that person at the altar of the Akashic records, I got done with my session and I just the, all I could feel was I've never felt more at home yeah. in my life. It's like an unexplainable yeah. feeling. And then mm -hmm. I had a moment of almost hangover mm -hmm. <laughs> coming back into my like regular world of being like, I've never felt more alone and left out or awkward or, you know, like, yes, so interesting. Like I, I felt like I was just sitting with a different frequency that felt very familiar mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, I know that feeling very well. And when I work with clients, I do preface that when you are entering into a space with me into a container, you're immediately going to feel a shift in your vibration. When we are done in session, we are working in very high frequencies. If I take somebody into a meditation, it will take you a little while to integrate back because we're working on the highest levels of the soul. And that's a very high frequency. I have experienced past life experiences where my guides have taken me back and I've felt so sad coming back to this life and going, why is it so hard right now? Because that felt so easy and beautiful and abundant and safe. And now we're in this version of our life and it doesn't feel that way. And so the hangover is so normal and the integration time can be different according to the experience. For me, that sadness of the past life lasted almost a year. And so wow. it's, it's really about learning how to find the value in this life so that you don't become so attached to that life that you don't want to live this life. That sounds really important. With your gifts, your ability to mm -hmm. dive down your past lives, have you allowed yourself to like fully dive down all those past lives or is it not mm -hmm. really worth it? Are you like, no, this is the life I'm living right now? I only experience past lives when it is necessary or when it's important. When there is a message there for me to understand or see deeper meaning behind. I don't necessarily feel called to experience each past life. While sometimes I will have moments and it feels kind of like deja vu or it's like an instant download. Oh, this feels really familiar. I may have been here before. I may have spoken to somebody in this way, but I try not to hold on to that. I allow it to be kind of like a book in my library. It's like, okay, I'm going to add that to my shelf. And that's, it's a part of the wisdom that I can pull from when I need it. If I find myself in a moment where I go, oh, I remember that past life. I can pull this from it and I'll go to the book, open it up and pull the information, but I don't ever hold on to it. I don't ever allow it to hold me back or keep me down. It's actually something that helps propel me forward because it's just additional wisdom for me. I love that. And that's with the whole concept of that your soul oftentimes walks through similar lessons throughout each lifetime, correct? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's interesting because here on earth, what will happen is that we have 
the what we call the great forget. So when you're born, you have no idea where you came from or why you're here. And it's kind of like a joke because you have to figure it out all on your own without being born in a place that's really supportive of spirituality or the soul where there's not a lot of conversation around it or understanding. And so when we are placed on earth, we are kind of given what they're showing me is like suitcases. And they're like, here, this is from your past life. You can access these suitcases when you figure out how to open them. And I think that what we're experiencing now on earth is everybody's going, oh, shit, I have these suitcases. What do I do with them? And what we're what people who are able to connect are doing and we're what we're able to teach is that we're saying, hey, this is your suitcase. This is how you're going to open it. And I'm going to let you explore your suitcase and find out what that means to you. How does it speak to your soul? Because I could read that suitcase and see it in a completely different way than you would. And an example of that I always give is that if a teacher was given an apple, she would think, oh, I got this from a student. If a farmer was given an apple, he would think of his fields and his orchards. And so you can never both have the same experiences and remembering and recognition as the soul who is meant to open their own suitcases and see what this information holds for them for this life. That is beautiful. And that is such a great reminder that the first step is to connect with your own gifts, to open those suitcases. And you don't always have to look to an outside person who has developed their gifts a little bit more. Maybe your journey in this lifetime is to unlock your gifts first to then open your suitcases. Exactly. I love that. So you have um, something coming up in December that you're launching, right? Can you tell us all about that? I do. Yes. I'm so excited about it. So I just rebranded in August to Mother Healer. And for me, this version of my business is the most raw, vulnerable version of who I am. This is the deepest workings of my inner soul. And I'm really putting it all out there. I have worked with women in a mentorship style program where I've been able to watch them develop their intuitive gifts and really find the power within them. And so this program is going to be a combination of teaching women and specifically mothers about intuition, energy. We'll go over what that looks like as a mother, how you can use energy in your home space, how you can influence your family, your home, your husband, your children, and how you can heal them using energy. And then also start identifying what's holding you back from being fulfilled. If you feel stuck, if you feel lonely, if you feel like you're in this place of in between, we're going to start diving really deep to help you figure out why do you feel like you're in between right now and what's keeping you from moving that foot forward. And so finding the blocks, really looking at them from a, a view or a a side of compassion because we all experience life and it feels very hard on earth. That's just the way it is. This is a school and you have chosen a very, very difficult school. But when you come out, you're going to be really prestigious. You're going to be very smart. You're going to be able to do a lot of things from here. And I want you to have those tools to move forward. I want you to understand that everything that life has taught you up until this point is to make you wiser and to help you bring your soul into alignment. So from there, after identifying blocks, we're going to really hold them, honor them, and then start to figure out what wisdom you can pull from those blocks. We're going to remove them, heal them, and then help you surrender so that you can be a clear, open vessel for this next higher version of yourself, for you to step even further away from the door into the light. And from there, you'll be able to access what I call your book of truth. And your book of truth comes from the Akashic Records. And it's something that sits on your shelf and it holds all the answers to what it is that you're questioning about yourself or what makes you happy, what makes you feel fulfilled. And I'm going to guide you there. I'm going to help you go there, access this book, give you all the tools you need to support you moving forward so that when we are done with the program, you become your own guru. I am an intuitive, you will become an intuitive, and you will no longer seek outside validation, outside opinions for the things that you need answers to. And that's going to go for your children too. So you're going to be able to be so intuitive that you'll connect with your children's souls and you'll be able to have the answers for what's best for them moving forward as well. 
Yes. Oh, I'm sold. That sounds so amazing. (laughs) I'm just thinking of my daughter and how helpful that would be. We live in a world of information and we take in a lot of information. So to be like, no, I am going to take my book of truth and pull that off the shelf and tap into my own information that's deep here inside of all the lessons I've learned of everything I've even just learned in this lifetime so far. We don't give ourselves enough credit for really really being our own authority. And I'm so excited for that because that is what we're moving into is that not looking to an outside source, not looking to a guru, but looking to yourself because the wisdom is within. It is. It really is. Thank you so much for chatting today. I loved this conversation. It really jazzed me up to like, okay, slow down, take some pauses throughout the day. (laughs) When I think I can skip my meditation practice, don't skip it because it is a practice to keep connecting. And even like that story, how you talked about when you were driving, you know, to don't discount those just little, little voices that you're hearing in your head. That is your intuition. That is something talking to you. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. I always say that when it makes the least amount of sense, that's when you really need to listen because that's not your mind going to a random place. That's actually somebody offering you guidance and a message. And you really need to make sure that you're leaning into that getting curious and asking questions. Yes, because your mind will try to make sense of it or tell you, I don't know where that's coming from or whatever. And exactly. when it doesn't make sense, it is your intuition talking to you. Yes. That's right. I love that. That's so great. One last question. Since we've went kind of out there into the ethers, let's bring it back here to earth. How do you bring little magical moments into your everyday life? Yeah, I think immediately what comes to mind is my garden. I work so much out here and into the greater universe that I need to work very hard on grounding. And for me, that looks like spending time in my garden and I will weed, I will plant, I will pick, we will harvest, we will eat. And bringing my children into those experiences for me, help me bring me down back into this version of me and then also help create deep fulfillment and connection for me as well. So my garden is my my biggest little helper for sure. It's very magical. That's beautiful. Your hands in the earth, just being embodied. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much, Annika. It's been such a pleasure. And you can find Annika on Instagram and TikTok, right? You're on TikTok too? Uh, TikTok and YouTube. Oh, and YouTube. All right. So you can find Annika Mm -hmm. on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube at underscore mother healer. And your website is motherhealer.co. It's still a work in progress because we are branding and I will be focusing more on the upcoming launch and then the website will come after. Okay, great. Well, that's amazing. Thank you so much for being here today. Yes. Thank you so much, Dana. I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you, Annika, for such an expansive episode. And I want to give you a shout out. Annika is hosting a mother healer circle, and that is going to be on November 2nd at 10 a.m. PST. And it's free. So if you're a mom and you really resonated with this episode, go to the show notes, click on her link and sign up to give you a little more information. Annika created the Mother Healer Circle to give you the opportunity to gather in a place that is nourishing, uplifting, and full of magic. She created it with the dream that you can ask for intuitive guidance, connect with like-minded mothers, and have a safe space to call your own. She really feels like we are not meant to do it alone, and this space is here for you to feel held, seen, and heard. So again, if this episode resonated with you and you want to join the Mother Healer Circle on November 2nd, go ahead and click the link in the show notes and sign up. All right. Thanks, everyone. Ordinary Magic is a Lit Path Studios production produced by Jamie Gale and Dana Fay. Music is by Shane Ivers. Until next time, I wish you many powerful moments of Ordinary Magic.